welcome back everyone my name is sagar and we are back here with another video and today in this video we have one of my favorite content creators mitch <laughs> i hope this was a joke <laughs> uh, you might know him with his channel name coding in flow so you do want to introduce yourself yeah, I'm uh, I'm Florian. It's my real name, not Mitch. But it was really funny, and I haven't uh, I haven't heard anything about Mitch in a while. I think he stopped making videos for the most part. But yeah, greetings to Mitch if he sees that. Um, he's also an Android channel. I used to be an Android channel, coding and flow, as you said. But um, I haven't made an Android video for a while, and lately I've been doing web development for the last uh, more than one year. That's my thing right now. But I used to make Android videos in the past. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Florian, can you also give your basic introduction? Like, uh, where are you from and uh, how you started your journey? Yeah. I'm from Germany, as you maybe can tell from my accent. Usually, other Germans can tell. And they, are, they like to mock each other for their German accent. Every comment on YouTube I get about my accent is from another German, usually. And I started learning to code in 2017 yeah when i was 26 and then i and three months after i started learning to code i already started my youtube channel and then i made videos about the stuff i was learning and it grew pretty quickly in the android space it's not so easy in web development i have to admit it's a much more competitive space i have realized now that i switched to a web development but in Android, it seems that there was kind of a, kind of a, how do you call it, a gap or a hole of real good content. So my YouTube channel grew pretty quickly back then. And yeah, this was my story. Nothing much else to say about this. Yeah, one thing I could mention, sorry, sorry, is that I didn't study computer science. This is usually something people want to know. I didn't study computer science, so I'm self-taught. I taught myself uh, from 26 onwards coding, and now I'm 33. I kind of uh, went through your uh, most of the podcast, and I saw that uh, this is the most uh, asked question. Uh, you have not yeah. uh, went to any universities, and uh, you have not done any graduation, right? I have. A, I studied business economics, but just because I didn't know what else to do back then, I, I didn't really have any ambition until my mid 20s before that i was just uh, floating through life basically and i did whatever was easy at the time and the easiest thing was studying business and economics but i didn't gain anything from that it was just uh, f like three years of wasted time basically because i remember nothing from this whole degree i have the degree but i did don't remember anything yeah but i have no computer science background yeah, that is a kind of a controversial topic, uh, either to do a degree or not, right? And uh, what about your uh, uh, journey? Like, uh, do you feel any partiality on uh, uh, one person who have a degree or uh, like you you don't have a computer science degree? Okay. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've been self-deployed for this whole time with my YouTube channel and then from there freelancing. So I don't really have any experience with um, applying in, in a real company, basically because I'm, I'm, I'm self-employed. Um, I think it depends on the country probably. I think in Germany, uh, they tend to uh, want people who have a degree actually. They are a bit more old school in this regard. I don't know how it is in the US. Um, I think usually it's probably uh, good to have a degree, but I would still not get one, um, which contradicts a bit, but I still think it's a bit of wasted time to spend a few years in university to write like code that's not really uh, that you I mean they I heard they write tests on paper and stuff like that so stuff that you don't need ever in your professional life I'm more a fan of doing what I have done basically um, getting your own name out there by creating something for example in my case that's a YouTube channel it can also be a blog or um, yeah, a YouTube channel blog or projects that you build that are interesting. I think this is a more fun approach and it uh, better sets you apart from the competition.
by just being interesting, you know, by just creating something interesting. I think that's a better strategy than going to university, in my opinion. But if you can do both, then it's probably even better. If you have a degree and you did some cool stuff while you were studying, that's probably the best. And by the way, uh, I just had my arm here in the camera. Not that people are wondering, this is, I burned myself while I was cooking. So I don't want people to think I'm sick. I just burned myself. That's why this is a red. <laughs> yeah, never throw a steak into a pan with really, really hot fat in there. Yeah, that's a great tip. Okay. Yeah. So I yeah, I wanted to ask, like, uh, what is your uh, turning point from Android to web? Because uh, I believe uh, one should stick to one technology and uh, master in yeah. that thing. So uh, here it is a kind of controversial thing you did. And uh, what is your take on this? Yeah, you're completely right. You should usually stick to one thing, um, and unless you really, uh, unless you realize that it's really not your thing, then uh, then it's it's better to switch than keep wasting time, or keep investing in something that you don't like. But for me, it was a bit special because I, uh, I mean, I'm self-taught, and I focused so much on content that I uh, neglected actually building stuff. And this was the reason why I started hating Android development because, because I spent most of my time like reading documentation and turning the documentation into these small tutorials. And this felt like homework. It felt really like really unfun work. And then uh, I later realized that my mistake was that I focused so much on uh, creating this type of content. What I'm doing now is I built more actual projects. For example, I built my tutorials around projects, my videos, and I also built personal projects. And I realized that this is a much more fun approach to learning than what I did before. So it's not so much that web development is more fun than Android development. I think it doesn't really matter. They can both be fun and they are both difficult. It's just my approach to learning that changed. And I needed years to figure that out for some reason. I was focusing too much on these small tutorials and too little on building fun projects because this is what I actually like. And this is actually what you what turns you into a good programmer, building real projects that actually work. So the, the thing is, if I could go back in time to the point before I had started web development, where I had my YouTube channel with 200,000 subscribers, I would probably stick to Android development because having such a huge YouTube channel focused on one topic is really valuable. But back then I didn't have figured out how I should approach content creation and learning programming. And this was my problem. And the reason I switched to web development is because I became interested in like indie hacking. So building my own, I, I did some attempts at building my own little indie startup basically. So a website that has some purpose. Um, completely unsuccessful. I have never had a single paying customer <laughs> in any of the projects I built, just to make that clear. But this was this was brought me to web development because with web development, you can just, uh, you reach more platforms than with Android, right? With Android, you usually, uh, you usually can only put an app on the Play Store and that's it. But with web development, you can have your app anywhere where there's a browser. This is how I got to web development. And building these indie projects is what eventually helped me figure out how to approach content creation by building projects. So yeah, I struggled with this a bit. And this is why I had such a trouble uh, with this whole Android content. Hmm. And uh, when you were starting, so your main target was on content creation only? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I didn't plan that. Originally, I was planning to uh, focus on coding and then make tutorials about the stuff I learned. And this was actually the correct approach. So I had the correct approach in the very beginning, but I lost it in some way because then my YouTube channel grew so quickly that I completely put the content into the, uh, made it my primary focus, you know, made it my primary goal to create more videos. But this was a mistake because, yeah, because making videos, it's not really what I wanted to do in the first place. I wanted to code because this is the fun part. And yeah, my, my initial plan was not to put content creation into the into the focus, but 
I think it's always a good idea to create some form of content about the stuff that you are learning, because in the in the programming space, it's just it's just important that people get to know you and uh, you get your name out there. You know, that's the same thing that you are doing right now with your podcast. It's a form of uh, making people know you, and that's very uh, it's a very good thing to do. It I think. Yeah, and also it, with the, along with that, uh, we will also learn what we are doing. So that will also yeah, increase right. our credibility. Yeah, I think yeah, I think the best approach is to uh, just code and build cool stuff, and then very naturally along the way, you learn a lot of things and you learn a lot of interesting things, and then just write a blog post or make a video about an interesting thing you learned. That's a really fun way to learning and content creation, I think, and it also it, and it also cements the knowledge that you gained. But yeah, my mistake was that I put that I made content a priority and coding the secondary thing, you know, that was my mistake. Yeah, and uh, someone, if someone is starting with the coding or development or even content creation, so what you will suggest for a beginner? So how they will start? What will, what will be their first step and uh, when they should jump to content creation or other things? Yeah, I think it doesn't really matter that much. I think if you were just search for a beginner tutorial in the language and platform you are interested in on YouTube, then it doesn't really matter which one you use, they are all equally good. I mean, my tutorials are obviously the best in the world, but the other ones are usually about the same, especially the ones that are high in the YouTube results. YouTube, YouTube naturally puts the good ones in the top of the search results after a while. And I would watch a beginner tutorial, try to learn the basics, and then as quickly as possible, I would try to build something for myself. Um, this can be a, an app or a website that is just that has some features that are interesting to you. It doesn't really matter what it is. Can be a to-do list app, can be something more sophisticated, but try to build something that interests you. And I think this is the best way to learn coding. And then don't watch courses and tutorials all the time because then there's a big chance that you just copy the code from the instructor and then you don't learn anything. It's important that you think for yourself by building your own projects. And you can still watch tutorials, but you should implement the stuff you learn into your own project. And you should learn to Google and search on Stack Overflow and find solutions. And I think that's the best approach to learning. You don't need a perfect beginner tutorial or the perfect course. And as someone who has a paid course himself, I can tell you that you don't really need any paid courses, in my opinion. They are supposed to make it a bit easier for you, but everything you need to know, you can also teach yourself. And some people, fare better with just teaching themselves rather than having someone tell them everything step by step all the time yeah and uh, personally i have never taken any paid course from any person and uh, i have i have actually yeah i i bought some paid courses but i think uh, i didn't finish any of them because the problem is they are then often outdated and i don't want to learn outdated stuff i want to learn the latest stuff and that that's the problem with programming content in general yeah. yeah right and uh, so where you find your latest content uh, like uh, you want to have some course or how do you research for that uh, for my for my content or what content i consume uh, or the like content I what, you, what you consume what you have to learn i just google everything i need to know i don't really uh, there is no particular instructor or particular website where i go to i just google the stuff i want to know and I read a, a lot of documentation. And when I make a tutorial about a certain thing, I usually read the whole documentation, or at least all the relevant parts from top to bottom. I want to do it really properly for my own videos. But I just Google. That's basically it. And these days, I also use ChatGPT a little bit. But Googling is usually a, gives you usually better results. Yeah, right. And uh, there is also one more question. like. Uh, how one should not fall into tutorial hell? Like uh, there are multiple courses about uh, from beginner to end and uh, one should follow oh, the complete course. But uh, that is also a kind of tutorial hell, right? Right. Um, yeah, that's why I said you should just build a project and focus on your project and just uh, Google every step along the way and don't focus so much on watching tutorials. That's I think that's a really effective way of learning coding. And I was going to add something, but I forgot what I was about to say.
But yeah, don't watch so many tutorials, just build cool stuff. And it's also the most fun way of learning, in my opinion. Yeah, right, right. And what about your clients? So you are also a freelancer right now, right? So At the moment, not, but I used to, yeah. Okay. So more, most probably you will also have a, a like a priority according to your content you are creating. So you are uh, popular for that. You are a professional web developer or a developer just. So you will get a priority on your clients. Am I right? A priority on my clients? What right. do you mean exactly? Like uh, uh, one is uh, just a developer and uh, one is you. You are a de developer and you are also creating content. So you are more valuable to a client. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think trust is a really big part. And that's why uh, that's why having content out there and being known in the industry in some way is very useful because, I mean, I had freelance clients and they told me that they had other, they hired other people in the past and they just uh, shipped some garbage and then they... Uh, they took the money and provided garbage and that was it. And that's what they want to avoid. So they go to people that are already known in the industry because then they have trust that they actually produce something that's good. And this is how I get to these freelance clients basically. And if you have a channel or a blog or something that's a bit bigger, then they will also reach out to you. Or what? Or also in my case, I, for example, know other creators, um, which sometimes refer clients to me because these other creators, they know that I can be trusted because I have this whole presence. But if you are a no name and you just write on Facebook, hey, uh, I can work for you, then people don't trust you because they don't know you and they don't know if you actually produce something useful. Yeah, definitely. And uh, for someone who don't want to show their face and uh, how they, how sh they, they should start. Yeah, either by writing a blog, uh, by writing blog posts. And by the way, a blog is also a cool, if you are a web developer, a blog is a cool project to build. Many people don't have ideas for projects. Yeah, build your personal website with a blog and you learn a lot of stuff along the way. A blog needs a website, uh, a database, for example, usually. And you can build a whole content management system around it. So this is a really cool starting project for, or a personal project for a web developer. And uh, what was the question again? Like, uh, I didn't for someone who don't want to show their face. <laughs> Can you repeat it? Yeah, for someone who don't want to show their face, so uh, all they right. don't want to talk and they don't want to talk. So how yeah. they should build, I mean, build credibility? Yeah, on the blog, you don't have to show your face. And on my videos, I think I, uh, I didn't show my face until I think I already had 100K subscribers. I didn't show my face mm. at all. I just made screen recordings. So it's not required. Later, I decided to show my face because I'm very narcissistic and I want to be uh, popular, you know, but you don't have to show your face at all, uh, especially in the programming space. Nobody really cares. I, I mean, okay, that's not completely right. It's probably good if people see a face, but it's not required. If they know your name and you can even have like an, an avatar with an image, then this can already be enough, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, currently there in market, uh, there is a hype of open source, if I'm talking about in India. So that is a kind of very hype thing. So what are your take on this? Have you ever contributed to open source? Uh, no, I, I'm not really uh, into that. Never seemed that interesting to me, to be honest. Uh, I have more fun building my own projects, but I know that some people like to do that. So if that seems fun to you and interesting and you think you can learn a lot out of it, then it can probably be a good idea. But I, I don't know anything about this. And uh, that doesn't affect anything in your career, right? No, but but for me, it's, yeah, but I'm also self-employed, so I can pretty much do what I want as long as I have my channel and everything. But for example, one skill I'm lacking is working in teams. I don't have much experience with that. and also working with other people on one code base because for my tutorials i uh, usually build like these smaller projects which is fun for me and which teaches people a lot of stuff but i don't have much experience with working with a team 
And I think working on open source projects can be a good way to practice that, right? Because you have to work with other people on a large project. So I think it can be a really good idea. But I think creating content is more important because that's mm -hmm. your, your own thing that actually works for your name, you know? Yeah, definitely. And uh, along with content creation, we also have this uh, public speaking field. So have you ever uh, went for public speaking? Uh, no, but I haven't been invited anywhere. Uh, in the Android space, there wasn't really that much going on, I think. And in WebDev, uh, I'm not popular enough that anyone would invite me. In WebDev space, most people, uh, not really much know my name, not really many people know my name. But uh, uh, it would. I mean, I would probably do it if I had the opportunity, but I would also be uh, afraid of it, which is okay. But it took me a long time until I actually came onto podcasts because I used to be uh, quite shy. And this is also why I didn't show my face initially. And I had podcast requests early on and I always declined them. But that's a that's a bad idea because you shouldn't avoid the stuff that scares you because that makes it even worse. So if I had the opportunity for public speaking, I would do it. But I'm not relevant enough to uh, speak anywhere. Uh, but I don't think so. You are, uh, I think, the best candidate out there who should public speak and uh, motivate some people to start content creation and uh, learn. Like I, I think that is a big thing. You started with Android development and you created a channel based on android development only and then you switched so that is a big thing according to me and i am also in part of your uh, discord server so uh, oh, I, nice. I thought uh, like uh, uh, there we can also have some uh, good interactions so are you also having some online sessions there or uh, any stages in discord some what some online like uh, there are vcs and uh, discord calls uh I, I still didn't get it okay so for example there are some communities who, who are having uh, their weekly community calls and uh, they are inviting people for some discussion over any topics yeah I, i'm not i don't have anything like that at the moment if that's okay. what you mean uh, okay, okay yeah i was asking that only i think that will be a that can be a better start if uh, if you want to go for a public yeah. speaking or anything you mean and, virtually uh, yeah virtually yeah that could be a good idea yeah and uh, what what about your uh, uh, interaction with ai and uh, what do you think about uh, devin yeah i think we are all doomed in uh, in one year every one of us will be uh, jobless and poor okay uh, you are talking about no, no, the, but... just the average <laughs> developers or uh, well, I, I don't i don't want to scare, i don't want to scare people i was just joking um i uh, don't really know I, at the moment, I'm not so sure if these large language models, even if they scale up bigger, if they can actually create the kind of out of the box box thinking that a human can do. So I really love using GitHub Copilot. I think it's extremely useful for boilerplate code and repetitive code. But at the moment, you can't even build a simple app with ChatGPT. Um, many people claim that it's possible, but you only get like the most basic apps out of it, like these uh, ping pong apps that have been written before a thousand times by other humans. At the moment, these LLMs, they don't do real programming and they are not a, a threat at all. I don't know what happens if they get bigger and their context windows grow, you know, to a point where they can read a whole code base at once. It's not, it's still not clear to me if they will be able to uh, do what a human can do with code. Or maybe we need a completely different AI technology and it, 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 is, it is another 10 or 20 years until this happens. I don't know. And I think most people don't know what will happen. At the moment, we are really in the sweet spot where AI makes coding more fun. I think ChatGPT is cool. And I think especially GitHub Copilot is amazing. It makes coding so much fun by writing all this boilerplate for us. I think it's amazing. And I hope it keeps being fun like this for a, for a few more years, at least, but time will tell. And I think most people who talk about this, including me, no one really knows what will happen in the next few years. But I think if we get to a point where programmers are completely replaced, 
then this should actually be a, a good place to be because then we can really, uh, I mean, then theoretically, uh, no one shouldn't really have to work anymore. And I think, I don't think that these companies are so evil that they will try to uh, enslave us and make us all poor. I think most of them are probably uh, good people. At least I hope so. And when we get to a point where you can replace a programmer with this kind of thinking that you need for that, then we should be close to a utopia, basically, where humans just don't have to work at all anymore for the most part. And it's not a bad future. But I don't think that programming will become obsolete and all programmers have to become or have to get some technical job. And then uh, this is the reality we are in. I think it will either not happen for a while or it will become much better than what we imagine if we replace this kind of work because we can replace most of the physical work then with robots as well, right? So if we get to a point where robots and AI does all of the work for us, then theoretically we should, this should be a really nice future, but maybe not. Maybe we will all get enslaved by machines. I don't know, but it will be exciting at least the next few years or decades. Yeah, yeah but uh, that result you said, so that is not exciting. That is actually scary. <laughs> I mean, uh, at least it's not boring. Yeah. I mean, I, I rather get, I rather get, uh, I rather see the world go extinct by uh, robots than having like World War II or something like that, or living through this time that our ancestors had to live through. I think uh, the, the Terminator timeline is much more exciting, but of course it would be nice if it all ends up good and we. Uh, live in a utopia where everyone can do what they want and still have a sense of purpose in their life through hobbies or whatever. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. And uh, what about your uh, content creation journey on social media? Like you are also active on Instagram and you are also on YouTube. So how do you see social media? Like uh, is it just a platform to interact or it is just a platform to increase credibility? So how do you see that? Yeah, I post on Instagram and TikTok because I make these YouTube shorts and I can re post them to Reels and TikTok because it's the same format, vertical video. And I can basically double dip this way because I already have the content and I get free followers. Uh, I think Instagram and TikTok, uh, they don't really do much for my channel because it's difficult to get these people to actually watch your longer videos. But it's free, it's free content basically because I already have these YouTube shorts that I want to make anyway. And Instagram reels are still surprisingly juicy. You can grow very quickly there. On some days I get, if I post a reel that's popular, I get like 500 new followers in a single day sometimes which is faster than my YouTube channel. But I think TikTok and Reels, they probably don't do that much for my business. And I think long form videos are more useful for the people who watch them, but also for you as a creator than short form videos. Yeah. And uh, for editing, uh, do you do it by yourself or uh, do you have editors? Yeah, uh, up until recently, I did everything myself. Now I have an editor for my shorts who uh, puts some like effects and stuff in there and it looks cooler. But my long form videos, I still completely edit myself. Okay. And uh, you, like uh, you want to have uh, cuts, a lot of cuts in your videos or uh, you just uh, uh, shoot uh, in one long go? Um, the way I record actually is I... Uh, I record like in 20 second increments, uh, thought for thought basically. So I press the shortcut for OBS to start recording. And I uh, say the next sentence or show something on the screen and finish my thought while I'm recording these coding tutorials. If I make a mistake, I actually delete it right away and start over again. And then after about sometimes 15 seconds, sometimes two minutes, I press stop. And then I read the note for my next part. So it's it's really tedious work, actually. I don't just hit record and, and code along. I actually I actually record in these really small increments 
because it's it's really fast to edit later because I just have to trim the end of and the start of each clip. And I know that the clips themselves are already complete because if I did a mistake, I repeated them. And it's a really tedious process. And for a large multi hour long tutorial, I have hundreds of these small clips then that I all have to uh, yeah, then cut apart. But it's still more efficient than recording in one long stretch. I did that in the beginning, but I usually needed 90 minutes of raw recording for like a 20 minute video if I record just in one sitting. And I found it more difficult because if I um, record in small increments, I can take pauses to think about what I say next and I can read my notes, you know. So this is how I record my long videos. Yeah, yeah. I, currently also I am going that way only. I start my video, I record everything. And if I am not uh, understanding anything or something is not working, so I just repeat that thing. So I think uh, that is also a tedious task. Yeah, but I, it works better for me than uh, in one sitting. Mm, yeah, okay. So last thing is, what about the roadmap you would suggest to someone? Because uh, that is the, I think, uh, highest demanded thing. Like, what is the roadmap for Android? What is the roadmap for web? Anything, if anyone wants to learn. Yeah, I wouldn't care about the roadmaps. Um, just watch a beginner tutorial on your topic and then build stuff, and uh, you will naturally figure out what topics you need. And I think roadmaps are not really that helpful. Roadmaps are usually just a way for... I don't, I don't know if, if you have a roadmap video on your channel, so I don't want to expose you. But I think most of the creators, it's just a, a really popular kind of content, but that doesn't really help people, in my opinion. Because first, it can be overwhelming if you see these many different topics that you have to learn. But also, uh, there's no specific order in which you have to learn them. You just learn the stuff that you need. And if you build an app, if you build, for, an, for example, an Android app and you want to build, you want to insert or you want to add notifications to it, then this is the next step for you. Learn how to implement notifications. But this is better than having a roadmap that says first learn broadcast receiver and then notifications and then this next topic because that, that's really boring and tedious and it turns coding into a homework, at least for me. So yeah, just watch a beginner tutorial and then start building cool stuff and your roadmap will uh, will naturally evolve in front of you, I would say. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And uh, with that, I will drop my your roadmap video in the description. You okay. watch your roadmap video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and I think uh, I, have, how... I, yeah, yeah, I have one uh, watch programming language to learn video. Okay, that's not a roadmap video, but it's a bit... It's a bit in the same niche, I guess. Okay. And uh, how do you decide, like, uh, this is the thing that you want? You switched from Android to web, and uh, you decided that web, web will be the field that you will be working on and creating content. So how you decided that uh, this will be your uh, best niche to be in? Yeah, actually, I think my best niche to be in was Android because it, uh, my channel was getting huge there. I had over 200,000 subscribers, just Android developers, which I think Android developers is one of the smaller niches out there. It's not so popular like web development. Mm. But uh, the web development co uh, YouTube space is so much more competitive. It's really much harder to get views there. And Android was really uh, uh, good to me. And, uh, but I switched to web development because I started building like these indie projects as I was talking about earlier. And this is what brought me to web development. And I really enjoy building React apps. And I really like that you can build a website and use it anywhere. Use it on your phone, on your computer, even on your TV or watch or whatever. And with Android, you can't do that. You can only put it on Android devices. And this is why I stick to, to web development now, because I think it's the most fun. It's the it's one of the cooler programming niches, but Android is fine too. And as I already said earlier, if I could go back in time, I would probably stick to Android because being self-employed and having such a huge audience is really valuable. And I can have fun with both. 
I have fun building Android apps and I can have fun building websites. Yeah, that is uh, that is the most important thing. What I believe we should have uh, fun with what we are doing. Yeah, I mean, work cannot always be fun, but I think programming should be fun a lot of the time. Otherwise, it might not be the thing that's. I mean, I I don't want to say if you don't. I mean, I think if you don't enjoy coding, then it's probably not for you, because there are many people who really enjoy coding, and it can be really fun. And those are the people that will thrive the most, I think, in the space, right? Yeah. And uh, you said that uh, web development market is uh, kind of uh, uh, cluttered and uh, there are a lot of competition in, in this market. So will you suggest anyone to start with uh, web or Android if, uh, if they are asking for high paying and uh, uh, just a job opportunity? Yeah. I was only talking about content creation, so YouTube, YouTube, pretty much. Um, I think when it comes to uh, to jobs and freelance jobs, I think there are more opportunities for web developers. Okay. But you will okay. find and, uh, work in both if you are good enough. Okay, but uh, there is also more competition. If there are, if there is one opening, then there will be most probably ten developers over it. Yeah, probably. I don't know how much the saturation is in each of these spaces. But if you enjoy one of the one over the other more, then that's probably the one you should do because you will find work eventually if you put your name out there as we discussed earlier. Hmm. Yeah, then definitely at the end uh, it will it will be only for our interest and uh, what we love to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm done from my side. And uh, if you have any questions for me, you can also ask now. Yeah, what do you think about AI? Are you scared of it? Uh, no, I think uh, I'm uh, growing with the uh, technology and I'm learning the things. And uh, I don't believe uh, AI will take over some uh, uh, pure software engineers. It can uh, do our uh, basic task. Like uh, if you are hiring an intern, so they can do our task for intern. That's what I believe. Average developers will be wiped out and uh, only software engineers will be there. Yeah, I hope so, certainly. <laughs> but time will tell. Mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes.